Hello everyone, welcome to ETF 12 Season 27, Week 2. We have some hot action tonight, two of my favorite teams are playing. We have LEGO versus Nerd Rage. LEGO beat Nanya in Week 1 and uh, Nerd Rage, uh, they tied against uh, AMS's team in Week 1, which uh, some would consider a good result as well. So, this should be a very exciting match. We have Get Gem on production, I am Peter, and joining me is News. Are you done with your uh, spaghetti news? More or less, Peter. Close All enough right. to, uh, to get the cast going. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, this this should be an interesting one. Um, the new Nerd Rage roster, it's a little bit shaky from what I've seen with PCW results. Uh, not quite on the same level as they were ne last season, but I think they'll be looking to address that, and they do have some big name players. Um, and the LEGO roster, on the other hand, is like quite different to anything we've seen before, with the exception of a few players. Big yeah. no big difference is uh, Phil on Medic now, rather than Demo, but we are going into the first mid beer. Yep, indeed. Uh, looking at the PW results, LEGO is definitely the better team, but you never know. They they beat Nanya in week one, so that would a lot of people argue that's the worst uh, team in the entire league. So they, they still have a lot to prove here. So if you will jump in and just kill Neo right away. Ombrek is under a lot of pressure as well. Just will uh, not quite see him, and actually two have gone down for LEGO already. Elko will have to go down, however, and that's going to be a very close mid so far. People are really weak on the nerd rate side, but uh, LEGO, they are kind of out, so they might come back in. Yeah, it looks like EB was just a bit slow to get out there, and uh, I think Domo and Dr. Phil are going to have to leave the mid here. Um, the LEGO soldiers were quite uh, forward ahead of their team, being really aggressive early on, and the Nerdridge players stayed more as a unit. Um, and they got really good damage in early picks for LEGO, but uh, the rest of their team just wasn't there uh, close enough to follow up, so it, they had to back out of the mid and give it up. But we do see it back on a, an even Uber steel mid. An even uber stalemate and we have potato on the mac and the sniper so he's probably going to be looking to move up to choke and get a sight line hopefully on the medic but i think any pick will do it this right oh, uh, 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 hello jim that's uh maybe we see he's just moved up also going sniper at this time i feel was pretty clever as a, he does did just go down there while peeking forward. We might see a counter sack, but uh, going sniper there is really good because of a really long sight line on second from the, the balcony to the choke. That makes pushing on a basically non advantage really sketchy. But here comes the, the bomb in from Glass Street. Hits uh, one nice rocket onto Dr. Phil, but Dr. Phil too slippery to allow a second rocket to hit, and he will be just fine. So we are kind of back here. New has gone sniper, and so has Potato. Yeah, I think Korbak was actually looking for the play. Uh, as the rumor, he is usually the one that goes for the sack, but he got vision onto Dr. Phil from Haunter and he realized he couldn't actually go in uh, while they were looking at him, and Glastry had the blind spot on the LEGO player, so he just took his opportunity, but I think he missed his two first rockets, and the first rockets are always the most important ones. Um, so he did get some damage off, but it really wasn't enough to make anything happen. Yeah, um, it's very difficult to actually get it. You know, you, you have to basically hit them as a Neo wins the sniper duel there. And Glass takes a lot of damage, but uh, that's just fine. That's going to be healed up. And now all of a sudden the ball is in the quarter of uh, Nerdways. And here they come. Dr. Phil taking a lot of damage, but once again he just surfs away. Really well done. Yeah, good positioning from Dr. Phil to just kite the surf away. Uh, again, Corbat couldn't get a good early rocket on him. And, and by the time that he did hit him for some damage, it really wasn't enough for, uh, for a force. There was quite a bit of damage put onto LEGO players, um, and we do have Potato in spawn just checking for off-classes. No, but I think he's actually nothing's outside changed. Of the oh yeah, he has just moved out now. I think he will be looking to make something happen. Uh, he's walking under the point now, and I don't think anyone on Nerdrage has spotted him. They're quite committed to Neo sniping at the choke, Peter. Yeah, I definitely... I, I don't think they're actually going to expect it. This is too obvious, somehow, you know? And uh, they've just been running sniper, but they they might be uh, suspecting when they see there's not something they're playing. But Neo going down, that's gonna really open it up. And uh, Potato, he takes down Ombrak. Perfect play there by uh, Potato, really biding his time. Uh, Phil will get forced here, but uh, this is just gonna be uh, basically a free push for Lego. They're gonna get mid for free, uh, as long as they don't uh, lose people to spam and sneaky traps. They'll be uh, golden here. They'll still have an uber advantage coming out eventually. Yeah, I think Dr. Phil was quite comfortable in popping the Uber there rather than risking the drop. Um, but they didn't quite cap mid quickly enough, so they don't really have much of an advantage, and Ombrak did get the forward spawn. Yippy goes in and it dies a bit early, but there is a... I think it's a conch? 
from it sounds like Josh. It. So they are holding it just now. Oh, they're, they're, and they, they should have, be they using it for the next fight. Yeah, they're just holding the conch and there's a big rotation for the uh, Nerd Rage players, PJ. Yeah, they are just overwhelming Lego right now, but the conch is in full effect. John's just running around like a scout, basically. And, uh, he's very dangerous, but he's not really hitting his rockets. And if you don't hit your rockets while the the whole banner is going, then you don't really heal up. So, uh, also definitely a failed uh, push and and conch play there from Lego. They, I think they got a little bit too excited that they actually had a conch. And uh, they were just a bit too aggressive there, and it really backfired. So that's going to leave on back with a big uber advantage. And as the rest of Nerdwage, they will push it onto Spire here. Lego will just fall back to left. Oh my god, Phil might get caught. Phil get caught. That was bad. That was wow. really bad. That was like that must have been a miscommunication or something. Yeah, Demul was uh, he was sniper and him and Doctor Phil were in lower lobby. After Demul gets the pick on Ombrak, they start backing up, but that's the only pocket target that Doctor Phil had. There was no one else to bring him back to the hold, and then Demul just went back to spawn uh, slightly ahead of Doctor Phil, and Korbak had the s smallest window of opportunity, but he was in the right place at the right time and gets the pick there. So. Now we see Ombrak with a 40% uber advantage, and they're going to be trying to push this. They're going to be trying to push this last with this. I think they're actually arrow building as well, um, so maybe they'll have a bit more time than we'd expect. But there is going to be a full hold in the engineer, uh, and I'd expect a pyro, but at the moment they don't have anything. Yeah, okay, Yippie's just switched to pyro, so yeah, they've this got has a been, full hold. Yeah, this has been really standard setup. You have a sentry gun, you have a pyro, and then some teams will even have a heavy. Looks like uh, Potato has built the sentry a little bit more forward than normal, so that could uh, be bad. And uh, if he, yeah, he's not even uh, reflecting them that much, but uh, so far Lego, they're holding kind of well. Josh going down, though, that's a pretty big deal. Uh, but Lego, they have all retreated into spawn, and now there's uh, things on the point, and uh, Dark Phil, he will get his Uber in time. That's going to cause everyone from Nerd Rage to back off here. And uh, they need to just not lose players, but however, they do lose coreback, so this is kind of getting out of control for them if, uh, if they're not careful, but it looks like they are, and they will just go back outside. Yeah, it's the safe play to make. Um, if they commit to the position lobby then and like take a fight, it allows LEGO the chance to push out of last, especially as they have uh, spawners a lot closer. But uh, by going outside of lobby and just playing to that small advantage, arrow building as much as they can, they're going to create a situation where they can actually make an ad advantageous push. Uh, but, that being said, last three goes down to Potato, who's watching top right, and gets another headshot onto Elikur. As they take the Uber in top left, Dr. Phil's on 85%, but they've got clean entry into the last point. They're not doing anything to play the cap time, and Josh is getting the counter frag onto Neo. They get Namtak as well, and this is so far a disastrous push for Nerd Rage, Peter. Yeah, they basically got nothing done. They, they did try to play the point, but one scout was just not enough, and... You know, basically the way it all worked out with Potato killing Glass before the push even came out, if they didn't cap it and get a bunch of kills really fast, it, would, it was always going to be a, a bad time because Dr. Bill would have the uber advantage. But, uh, you know, they didn't even, like, they didn't play the point, they didn't get Dr. Bill to pop, they didn't, like, achieve basically anything. So I think Lego will just push out here and try their best to put some uh, time onto the spire. We might see a soldier just jump up there and, and put time on it to just force soldiers to actually initiate and, and get up there. But maybe Lego like, will also just hold out. In, I just noticed that Josh there. went back to spawn to switch to, I think it's the battalion's backup? Yep. Um, so I don't think they'll be looking to push with this uber advantage, especially as Ombrak's about to get it, but it looks like they are folding forward in lobby. Uh, and I think they want to just use Josh to get some spam off to build that con. They take the uber in as the Nerd Rage soldiers get aggressive onto the Lego combo. They get a pick onto Glass Tree, and Potato's firing now. Yeah, there we go. Ombak eventually going down to move did a really great job there. He was basically the pocket soldier for that exchange and he just blocked off the medic so well and Ombak just couldn't escape. And uh, the move even got away with his life. So it's so a great play by him. And Joss at the same time got a ton of spam in. So he will probably have a banner in the very foreseeable future. Yeah, and with the 40% advantage because uh, Ombrak was still in the respawn queue, they've got enough to be looking to push mid really soon. I'm curious, we see Korbak hiding above Shithouse, um, and I I don't think they can see him at the moment, so Korbak's, it's all eyes on Korbak right now. He's the one to play and to nullify the advantage that Lego are walking in right now with. Yeah, Lego, they are not really waiting either. They do have the wall on the flank right now. That's definitely a sign that they're, they're looking to go in. And yeah, here we go. Korbak jumps in. You know, we knew exactly what was going to happen, but no, he gets uh, taken down. Dr. Phil is very weak, however, so like any kind of roller spam is very, very scary right now. Phil could actually die to it. 
and uh, small sticky traps, you know, just one sticky in the right spot will get him. But Lego, they were just going to go out through the Honda here, just uber right away. They hit a, a lot of nice rockets uh, to, to start it all off, but, and then they jumped the move behind. And, uh, oh, Josh, I think he's out of ammo. That was uh, pretty sad to get hammed down. But uh, Lego, they have a future choke, and now uh, the move is behind line. I like the decision that LEGO did there. They had two picks uh, from the mid-fight, and instead of cap, uh, stacking the cap, they knew they had enough of a window of opportunity to push with the two picks and use the battalion's backup, but it, unfortunately it didn't amount to anything. Now we see Nerd Rage after getting two picks uh, on second, they're retaking mid and LEGO have just given it up. It's more or less even Ubers with a slight advantage to Ombrak, uh, but now the LEGO players have got spawned, so we're back to a 6v6 situation, and I don't know if Josh is still running... Ah, he's actually switched to the, the conch now, Peter. Yeah, so he, he's mixing it up with the banners. He, he already... I got uh, two different banners uh, <laughs> to pop already, so he's definitely doing some damage here. We see two soldiers from Nerd Rage uh, jump in the, at the resupply there, but one of them kind of beefed their jump, so it, uh, it amounts to nothing. But I do like these little plays where you just keep on prodding uh, at the flank, and uh, if people are not really aware, then they can just be caught off guard and get taken down, and then you have a pick to work off of. And uh, if you lose a soldier, then, then you know you still have mid, and it's very difficult to actually suicide from second into mid on Badlands. It's definitely easier to go from mid to second, no doubt about that. You have a slight height advantage, but uh, as, as it is, uh, I think they're just going to set up to maybe try and, and set up another play, or maybe they'll just like try a resub push. Everyone right now is in the house for Nerd Rage, and uh, let's see if they, they actually move on it or if they're just posturing. Hey, it looks like Korbak's peaking Hunter gets some good damage onto Josh, but it's not really enough to make a move from. Um, they are resetting to their position in mid, and it looks like Neo's going back to spawn. I think he's probably going to take Sniper. Um, yeah, so we'll I would keep actually an make eye out sense. for that. Yeah. Yeah, he does no, you're right. decide for the Sniper. I, I don't think Neo goes Spy too often. I think, uh, if anything, it's Korbak that usually does that for Nerd Rage. Um, and Potato's also gone back to spawn to check because they're expecting the off classes in this delmit. So now that they know they have a sniper, Potato's decided to take the counter sniper, and we're going to see another sniper duel. Last time we had the sniper duel in this choke point, it was Neo that won it of the two. So uh, hopefully Potato can make things a bit more even and put his foot in the door to say, Neo, I'm the best sniper on this server. Yeah, right now Potato's playing it very passively. He's basically not trying to duel the, the other sniper, and I think they're just trying to play off the event, like they don't know that Potato is Sniper yet, so he's probably just trying to set up a really good first shot, he's just standing in choke, so like he's not in a position to peek at all, and he also cannot get picked. And uh, right now, nobody did in house, and they're, they're trying to just uh, surprise Josh in there, but Josh, he's onto it, and he actually catches out glass, which great job there by Josh, really diligent, uh, and good calls from Jamul, I assume as well, there's really good coordination there between the flank and the, and, uh, the pocket. But Dimul actually goes down. Oh, but he gets the force. I thought that was a bad play, but that was actually a really good play by Dimul. Gonna be uh, bad for the fantasy points, but no, it was really good uh, in context. As uh, Illico tries to jump behind, he gets taken down by both scouts. There's still two players behind, Korbak and Neo, I believe. No, not Neo. Actually, uh, Neo gets taken down by uh, uh, the sniper, so Potato, he gets his revenge. As uh, Korbak actually somehow makes it out to choke, and the uh, Namtech is still behind lines on 5 HP, however, and he gets taken down finally. And it looks like LEGO are getting the better of this situation, but they need to make this push work quickly because the Nerd Rage spawners are going to come in uh, and they don't have anywhere near Uber yet. They need to get some sightlines for Potato and get him to make some picks. And it looks like, yeah, because the sniper walks in the choke, I think Nerd Rage aren't comfortable contesting that without any Uber because they don't want to lose any uh, picks to the sniper. So they do end up giving up the mid. Um, and we do see the banner coming out from Josh. He's jumping into the choke point here. Uh, they're putting out so much damage onto Elikor, but he's not dying quite yet. Uh, the soldier as well, Glaster, he's also weak, but the counter uber comes from Nerd Rage, and there's just much better position for Lego right now. They should be able to focus fire and get frags here. Demul gets onto Ombrak, gets the frag while Mamtak gets Potato as the spy, and it looks like Phil would be the only consolation frag that Ner uh, Nerd Rage could get. It's just Namtak left on the spy. Elikor's oh, he's the early spawner, the but I don't think it's quite going to be enough, Peter. Yeah, oh, Josh, he's, uh, he's really trying to get him, but uh, he's not quite able to predict where Namtek is hiding. So, yeah, Namtek is still a threat. Uh, Phil, however, is uh, regening a lot, so him getting pistol down is almost out of the question at this point. But he could still get backstabbed, but uh, Phil, like, he's basically walking backwards at this point. 
He's just being so careful. I think Namtak's just looking to go back to resupply. Or at least that's what I'd do if I was him. Oh, he actually bumps into oh. Demil. What timing that that was so coincidental, but Demil got back onto Namtak. And now with their 50% advantage and a pick going into the last, there is only the Pyro and Sentry on top left. I think they should be looking to push top right after this. They're walking in with the Uber. The Pirates reflecting so much spam and they've not yet dealt with the Sentry. It finally is going down. Uh, the NG oh, lives, however, and the spawners though. are coming in. Yeah, that was a, a big mistake in hindsight, for sure. Elikuru popped, uh, blew his sticky, so uh, as soon as Lego saw it, they just dived the point because everyone was uh, playing inside the spawn for Nerd Rage. So that didn't work out at all for them. That was a, a tiny mistake there by Elikuru, but uh, Lego, they immediately capitalized on it. So that's going to make it 1-0 to zero for Lego. And uh, that was a pretty long round, but uh, a lot of action happened during it. It's 1-0 to zero with 15 minutes remaining. Let's see what happens on this mid. So, going into it, there's quite passive position from the Nerd Rage players, just locking down their choke. Same uh, is the case for Lego, but Josh is taking a lot of early damage. Elikor dies to Demul's bomb, and he ends up cratering. Domo with the trade pack on the point, and the position's not great for Lego right now. Korbag on the oh, point, gets EP wow. and gets Dr. Phil. This is going to be almost a wipe for Nerd Rage. They only lost to Elikor and their soldiers, and they're going to be able to move on to second with their scouts. Uh, it looks like Potatoes switched back to Engineer on last. Good thinking of him to get that set up nice and early so his team's got something established for the last hold. Uh, yeah. And we should see Nerd Rage coming into a second just now. Yeah, as Potato, you can basically go Sniper and Spy to try and get the Medic, or you can start building up a Sentry. He, he opted for the Sentry. Definitely the more stable play. So uh, Nerd Rage, they'll be definitely looking to, to go in probably top left with the demo and a Scout. That seems to just be... Uh, people just seem to have figured it out, and they've all decided that that's uh, the, the go-to strat. And uh, oh no, the dispenser goes down. <laughs> that's not a big deal. Uh, he's been trying to build this block, but uh, there we go. The pyro actually doing a great job blocking the Uber right now. Uh, and pyro would probably go down eventually, but he really slowed it down. The sentry has eventually gone down, but Nerdwick, they didn't really make any headway due to the pyro there. They're still trying to force their way in top left, but Elikor eventually goes down, and this looks like a complete disaster. The mule even just spamming up and getting the the final damage to actually kill people, so great hold there by Lego. That was basically all... Uh, I think, was it the uh, Yippee that was uh, Pyro there? I think it was. Yeah, Contract. I think it was. Domo might go down and resub here to this scout, and he does. That's so unfortunate. I think that's going to have to cancel the push out, even though they have 80% uber advantage. And it's a shame, because he played the last hold really well. Uh, the last round, Elikur dead his stickies uh, a bad time, and that's what lost him uh, the round, but... Domo knew exactly when to recommit and he, after the uber faded and, the, and Nerd Rage had dealt with the pyro and sentry, uh, Domo just put so much damage on the choke that it completely ruined their attempt at pushing last. So he played that really well but with just a slight overextension into resup. Um, but now Josh with 80%. Is currently, yeah, he's currently roaming trying to get some, some spam out for, for his banner but I, I think he might have overdone it there. But actually he gets out alive somehow and now he's an, got an arrow and all of a sudden Lego gets three picks off of snipes and stickies. That was a great play there. I was watching Josh, he kind of overextended I feel like but I don't know if you survive is it an overextension? You be the judge on that one. Potato jumps up on Spire, Lego has a ton of time on it and I don't think they're actually going to be able to block this but they, they might be able to at least if, uh, get some fights going in, maybe at the resupply or at the very least hold mid here. Yeah, I think this would be pretty much an even situation, but Josh I think has been building pretty well and he actually overextends oh. slightly into house and gets caught out by Korbak who has heals on him. Korbak's looking for the sack, it jumps in but gets struggled by the stickies and it doesn't amount to anything. Uh, so I think they've got an opportunity now to take some off classes. And what I was saying before with Korbak being their best option for Spy, I think I'd quite like to see that. Um, and it looks like Lego actually aren't deciding to go for any off classes. I think Josh has taken another banner. No, he's back onto gunboats. So changing up again, Josh, I feel like he switched it up with every single loadout or every single spawn. Yeah. It doesn't seem like he's gone the same thing twice. It actually kind of surprised me that he didn't go for a banner here. I, I know it's switching it up, but this make this is such a good situation to actually go banner because you can just spam in house and and build that banner. It's a stalemate with even Ubers. I do want to point out we do see the Korbax by as I was oh, hoping man. for. Uh, and I think he's going to be moving in through Valley. We're trying to get some sort of position behind the LEGO players. And it doesn't look like they're expecting it as of yet. They're all... they're not really holding anyone in resup. And Korbax under the bridge right now. Um, 
And he's got quite an opening here because no one's placing, uh, playing too close to Phil. He's oh, in the cloak. He's in behind. What? Oh my god, he, he misses the first one and now he just speeds out of there. But Potato the with back. the trade frag onto Ombrak. Oh my god, these pick classes, they're out of control. They both get the pick. Well, uh, no medics up now at all. Whichever team has the best uh, buffs could uh, potentially go in here, but it looks like uh, that Jock would like to be the first one to go down. So th now the ball is in the court of uh, Nerd Rage. I don't know if they're actually going to push on it. There's a scout in very aggressively, but Glassby gets taken down and Potato takes down Namtek. Meet a headshot. Really nice uh, play there from Potato. So I think we're basically stabilized here. We actually see a small advantage here for Ombrak. They were holding mid, so he's going to spawn slightly earlier, but it's not a big deal. Yeah, it was really well played. Uh, Domo there got a nice sticky trap kill and then uh, did a lot of damage to the scout and gets another on Korbak as they're entering into the mid here. Sticky trap from Elagor does get one of the Lego scouts, but they should be able to take this mid for free. Uh, I think Nerdrage are actually trying to recontest this despite having given up all the position on mid. And I think they do realize once they're at the joke that it's beyond them, so they do decide to give it up. Um, with only one soldier alive for Nerdrage at the choke right now, they don't have too much spam to deny the sniper and Potato after that mid-air headshot, he's got to be feeling good. I think he's just looking to get a deeper sightline onto the choke. And right now there's nine minutes left. Legor one round up and they're controlling the game. They have the sniper, they've got the pit class that Nerdrage don't. Uh, that being said, Namtak has to switch to spy and he's moving out of the spawn. Hey, Duels in gets once, launched right? and... Does get killed. Yeah, that was a pretty classic play. You know, like pushing into a sniper is still very uncomfortable, even if you're one person up. And uh, it's just Badlands. Uh, Badlands second to into Badlands mid, it's still very uncomfortable. But Namtech is just about in position now. So maybe if uh, they start moving, they, they, can, they can cause them to, to back off into Namtech. Uh, but we'll see. It looks like uh, Yippie is at least suspicious about this, this buy. But uh, we'll see. Potatoes are uh, wearing uh, the stabilizer backpack here. Elico actually going down. That's a really big pick. That's the demo man down. And it uh, looks like uh, Dr. Phil and Yippie will make it out as well. But there we go. Potato going down to Namtek. He, he was biding his time. And now all of a sudden they have two picks here. The pocket and the, the sniper down. But uh, Yippie gets the first kill here on Glassy. But the second soldier comes in. Korak trying his damn best to take down Dr. Phil. But he doesn't quite get him. Dr. Phil going down to about 10 HP. He's regening his little heart out though. And... Uh, Unless he gets taken down by the spy, he should be just fine and Lego might be able to push. Yeah, uh, Phil was on like 20 HP and Namtak was right next to him. I think he could have decloaked and hit him with one revolver shot to get the frag, but yeah. he didn't see the opportunity. Um, it was a really good uh, uber from Lego to get Elikor early in the fight, because when the repush happened from Nerd Rage, they didn't have the damage output to be able to follow up and get any frags, or get a significant frag, so... Lego did have a fight on mid, but they were able to win it uh, because of the damage output that Domo had that uh, was negligible on Nerdrage's side because they didn't have a demo. And now they have their full uber. Ombrak did survive, so he has his as well. Uh, Demul goes down to the sniper, and I think at this point Lego are thinking, there's seven minutes left, we just lost one pick, we don't want to overcommit here. Josh actually dies as well, and Nerdrage want to go with this. They're not happy with being one round down right now. Yeah, uh, and I think they're looking to push out Beta. Yeah, the only problem they really have right now was that Neo was on Sniper. Uh, so he's going to have to go back and go scout. Here we go. Uh, Glassy will pop uh, off uh, the Uber from LEGO eventually. And there's a lot of time on the point as well. But LEGO, he, they should have the better Uber. But uh, as it turns out, they don't at all. Potato is up there blocking this fire. But uh, I, I don't think that's going to actually work out. And LEGO, they're just going to have to back out here. There's a lot of pe people down. And Dimul has gone Sniper. So it's basically on to Dimul to, to deny this push right now. And he does miss the first shot. Uh, here we go, Glassy. He's, he's in alone though. <laughs> Gets uh, eventually body shot it down. And uh, that was a bit weird there by Glassy. It seems like he was not really on the same page as his team. Just went in alone and eventually got picked off. And now it's just Lego moving forward. They're putting so much pressure on the, in the choke, and they're allowing the wolves to just go in there and get a bunch of free shots. And eventually he's gonna hit something. And Lego, they're really doing so much damage right now. The demo man's gonna go down as a soldier in house uh, or in mid actually. He's gonna come through choke now. But uh, I think LEGO should be able to deal with it. Yeah, the wall just uh, rail guns him down. And this has been a really solid push for LEGO. Yeah, and with quite a long time before the spawners are up for Nerdrage, I think LEGO will be able to get into last while there's only three players up for Nerdrage. Josh is going straight to the point to kite people down. Glastry dies to the stickies of Domo. And now the spawners come in for Nerdrage, but I don't think it'll be enough. They're oh my God, just able to contest the point, but Phil... 
just manages to survive and I think if they didn't have a sniper this would be a bit more one-sided but it just it goes the other way because of the spawners of Nerdridge. Really unfortunate for Lego on that last push but I think they could have done it if they were just a bit quicker. Yeah, that was very close. Namtek hit some really clutch shots. He was uh, doing a really great job of putting pressure onto the demo and making him blow his thingies and then uh, going back and denying the point and then hitting some really important meat shots. So great, uh, I'll, I'll give uh, credit for Namtek for that really clutch hold there, but uh, Lego, they've got to be kicking themselves. They could have uh, like taken a really, really sizable advantage. As it is right now, there's five minutes left and they're only up one to zero. So they are definitely uh, like in a worse position than they could have been. But still, they're up one to zero, and uh, we actually see a lot of the uh, nervous players uh, in the slope here. The move gets taken down, but uh, Josh takes down Ombrag, and all of a sudden, everyone's just dying like flies on both sides here. But uh, Phil is crucially alive, so as long as they just play around heels, Lego should come out uh, on top here. Josh running around with his escape plan, but Korbak's actually in. He gets one rocket onto Dr. Phil, but does get cleaned up by Josh. And like you were saying, Phil living throughout that uh, fight is the key difference maker. And now with, what, four and a half minutes left and a full uber advantage, this will be the time that LEGO are really looking to cap out their second round and establish the, the, the real control over this map. There's still a good chance that Nerdrage can get back into it because a lot of the fights have been quite back and forward. But I think they'll be looking to seal the deal here and make it really hard for Nerdridge to get their foot back in the door. And I think they're looking to push just now, Bia. Yeah. Uh, right now, Ombrak's acting on Crit Creek, so they're, they're banking on Lego failing this push, and then they can catch him off guard with a Crit Creek. But they, they, they get two really quick picks. Uh, actually, Potato will go down, and Korbak is just in behind line too, causing a ton of trouble. So a bunch of Lego players are not actually in the fight. It looks like Lego are actually, have actually been completely rebuffed. There's even a heavy on last, and the Soldier jumps in here as well, trying to take down Elecor, but Elecor receives an arrow and uh, does a really good job of just zoning off Josh here. So that's another failed push for Lego, and this is exactly what the uh, Rays were, were banking on, and they might be going quickly. No, they didn't pop it yet. That was just a, uh, an Australian weapon. They're getting a kill. But Lego, they're, they're really far out in choke right now, so they're not contesting Spire very well. But uh, they are, have, I think it's Potato on Sniper. It's very loud. And, Yo, there, there we go, Potato's down, and uh, that's it. the only kill so far, but the move eventually goes down. Uh, Ombrak, uh, or Neo, sorry, getting uh, the crits flashed onto him, and uh, Yippie trades with Elecor, that, that's kind of fine. And Dr. Phil's on 90%, so I think Lego, they're just going to hold mid here and, and try to slow down the game. Yeah, it's a good attempt at pushing, but they can't lose two players, and the result is this, that with three players still alive for Lego, and they managed to keep their Uber, oh, they, they are just going to be running havoc over Nerdrage. As you say, they got uh, Ombrak. Navtax hiding under the midpoint, probably looking for a back gap, but Lego are just going to be holding the mid. Uh, just waiting to slow down the game a little bit. Let the bust oh, decay. Gets, uh, Big out. shot from Josh, almost getting the double onto Glass Tree, but uh, dying for it. And I think they'll be looking to push in with their heels now if they can support the move who's behind. Yeah, Ombrak might run into the wall here. Uh, that, that could be very crucial. But the Lego, they're actually just moving in here. Ombrak uh, did the. Uh, find his way around Demul, but uh, eventually he does run into him. Demul onto them, but uh, he gets piped by Elecor. And, uh, so Ombrak survives that, uh, just perfectly dodging uh, the, the rockets of Demul there. You know, it's, it's possible to hit people you can't see. Domo going down, that's going to make the Spire pretty uh, vulnerable right now. And Yippie just doing his damn best to defend his medic. Looks like he's doing a good enough job to actually allow Dr. Phil to escape here without having to, to pop his Uber. Now it's two minutes left, and uh, just as I say, like, Dr. Phil actually decides to pop his Uber. Guess he just wants to save his uh, soldier there. And uh, they are so close to getting Ombrak, and they eventually they do get him. He's we're still running Creepsqueak. So he's all in at this point. Glassman jumping in very aggressively, takes down Josh uh, along with the uh, Elecor. But Lego there is still putting pressure on and choke. And here comes the second soldier along with Domo. So Domo and Demul just uh, doing a lot of house cleaning, and eventually Lego will just out muscle Nerd Rage there. I feel like in a lot of these fights, Phil is just surviving where Ombrak isn't. Um, and a lot of the time, the Nerd Rage scouts are playing really disconnected from their medic, it seems, at least in the transitional play. Uh, whereas Phil's got a reliable combo. I, I noticed Dommel staying a lot uh, around Phil. Nampat going down, Demul actually gets caught off because uh, Korbak and Ombrak are pushing up Balcony. They know that Phil doesn't quite have the Uber yet, so they are looking to push out and get something going before he gets it, because there is only a minute left and there's only one round in this. Uh, Elicor meets them in lobby, but the Uber comes out for Lego. There's only two players alive, no and this is going to be another round. Yeah, no one on last. Here. Phil takes uh, the Uber off. Uh, Scout tries to block it, but he gets uh, 
juggled off there by Josh, and that's going to be it. That was a pretty desperate push coming out from Nerd Rage, but they had to do it, and it was just ended up being a bit too messy, and they eventually two players snuck behind. So Lego's going to take this probably two to zero. You know, maybe we see a miracle 39 second round, but we're definitely <laughs> going to see some pyro shenanigans on mid, so we will get a little bit more enjoyment from this map. Yeah, I'm going to the potato cam, getting those squirt shot jumps uh, into house. I want to see get some fat reflex. <laughs> he's actually doing <laughs> oh, more he's of these jumps. Crack. It's pretty impressive power play, despite the fact that he's not doing much. Oh, oh gets the reflect there, shot onto glass tree. That's what I was looking for. Credit for, to Potato. Gets some momentum going into the second map of Reckoner. Uh, but yeah, I think that was quite a dominant performance for LEGO. Despite only two rounds in it, it did really seem like they were controlling the game most of the time. Uh, what do you think, Vito? Yeah, it's the safest 2-0 scoreline I've ever seen. It was basically 1-0 yeah. for most of it. So, you know, there, there were a few dodgy moments there for LEGO. They were definitely being pushed on last, but no, overall I think they played really well and they were definitely looking like the stronger team. But, you know, you, you still only basically lost 1-0 to zero here for, for Nerd Raid, so I don't think they're, they're too beat up about it. I, I don't think, like, they lost all their confidence. They didn't get crushed or anything. So I still think there's going to be a lot of game in it and and Reckoner is basically anyone's game. Like, if you happen to get yeah. a really fast round on, on on Reckoner, you can just hold last forever, right? So, yeah. Well, not I have a feeling... Um, it looks like they're trying to get Glastry to sort of play in a similar vein to how Medico used to play for them, being the sort of heel-heavy leading pocket, but I don't think that quite complements the strengths of their players because before they had Namtak on demo and he was able to play that supportive role, but I think now it would make more sense to give Elikor a lot of the heals because he likes to play a DM heavy, uh, just like damage output demo. And I think putting heals into him during fights is probably a better idea. If Glastry can play more of a loose pocket role, I think it would probably suit them better. Um, because we see that kind of dynamic going on in the Lego side where Domo's playing really close to Phil a lot of the time. And he's staying alive in so many fights, just putting out constant damage out. I don't know if we have the logs up, but I'd quite like we to take do. a look at them. Yeah, we do. As, uh, Josh uh, did some top damage, but that's not really the interesting part. The, the interesting part really is uh, Glassley's stats, which are 9 for 19, having 161 damage per minute. That's uh, really terrible for, for Romo stats, like, especially if you, you're trying to, to do the same role that Medico did. That's, uh, that's yeah. uh, pretty damning. And uh, then... On the other hand, we see Korbak actually having a really good game. So Korbak, he was always a beast, and he's still a beast. Just uh, there's not the, the complimentary beast soldier right now. And you also mentioned, uh, when I look in the heal stats, uh, you were right on the money. Where Alicor is, uh, is third in heals received, while Domo gets significantly more. Although Josh was pretty heal heavy as well, uh, probably due to the banners. And, and peeking and spamming that a lot. Yeah. I, and another thing that what I was mentioning that we noticed is the the deaths for the medics. Phil had yeah. five and Ombrak with ten, and that that's just too big of a difference at this level of play, especially in um in in a meta where it's very focused on stalemates and pit classes and keeping your medic alive. When your medic has twice the deaths that the enemy medic has, it just shows that you're really not controlling those uh, those stalemates and those holds very well. Um, and yeah, I, I don't. I think Elikor should be having more heals. Uh, and it, it kind of surprises me that Neo has 23 because it didn't seem like he was playing too tightly to, uh, to Ombrak all the time. But there's also Potato on Ombrak's heal stats because I guess uh, he healed him while he was spy. Uh, so that's a nice one. And we're looking at the mid fights just now. Interestingly, Nerd Rage winning two of the first mid fights but not managing to make any rounds out of it. Or actually, those were the two mid-fights of the, the main game, because the last one was just that 40-second round. So yeah, despite winning the uh, the mid-fights, Nerd Rage couldn't really get any momentum going. And again, I think it just comes down to Phil staying alive in a lot of these situations, and Lego just winding out the holds and controlling the game. Yeah, it was really quite impressive. Uh, like, Dr. Phil always got out and... And Domo also did a really good job of just staying alive whenever he needed to. I really, I saw this pattern where, where Lego, they would just retreat and then they would retreat back to a sniper and then they'd, they would all just uh, play around that until they had all their spawners and then they'd reset and they'd move forward. Like that seemed to happen quite a lot. And uh, the, the server just went down. Uh, Josh messaged me. He was saying they were just like resetting the server. So it should be back up uh, very soon. So, so don't panic. 
<laughs> it's all okay. We got this. We got this. But uh, yeah. Um, or what, what the only thing else here that really stands out, like leading that frags, Josh had seven in the middle area. That's kind of surprising. Usually pockets are not that dominant on mids. Usually yeah. the scouts. I think maybe that's slightly affected by the banners, because I know he had a few... I think most of the banners were used around mid and second for LEGO. I don't think they had many in last. Um, and yeah, the the frag percentage is just heavily on the mid fights, because again, like on the seconds and last, it's mostly just stalemates and holds. There's not too much going on, but most of the transitional play and obviously the mid fights uh, will be happening on the central control point, and that's why I think we see a big spread of, or a, a big proportion of the frags uh, on mid. Yeah, about the frag proportions, the the damage is almost identical. Lego has like 500 more damage over the course of a game, that's nothing. But the Lego, they had 14 more kills, so they have 84 kills to the f 70 of nerd rate. So, so that's a pretty big uh, disparity. Right there. So that yeah. uh, seems to me like uh, LEGO is doing a much better job of actually focus firing. And Ombrak also dropped three times uh, to Phil's one. I think Phil dropped once to the Spy, Yep. Uh, whereas Ombrak dropped to one Spy, at least one Sniper, and I'm not sure if... I'm not sure what the third one was. Yeah, I'm, I'm, try I'm struggling to, to come up with it as well. It might have been one of his crit squeaks or something, but I, I seem to recall that he popped that one, so I'm, I'm probably wrong. Um, we're probably just doofuses and, and actually forgetting something really <laughs> obvious. Uh, the... but yeah, um, going into the second map of Reckoner, I think it's a bit more... Well, it's, it's quite an open map for a lot of the points. Um, you know, quite well, wide yeah. open, like high sky boxes, that kind of thing. And I think there's probably more room for a soldier aggression to to play a factor and the mid's also kind of slower than badlands like you can't really commit to a side really early as much on reckoner because it's so wide open uh, it's hard to take that position really early uh <laughs> but looking at the frag differentials player on player we see domo with uh plus six kill difference on glastry and again i think those were the two the two players that would stand out to me i, I thought domo was having a really good game uh, for Lego, and I thought Glastry was having a really poor game for Nerdridge, so that makes sense to me. And then uh, Yippee actually with plus three on both of the Nerdridge scouts, so that's yeah. that's an interesting one as well. Winning those scout one v ones, and I think he did top frag in that. Yeah, like Yippee, uh, he always seems to get really low damage, but really good KD. So like he's just uh, the classic happy cool scout basically, like where he just plays really around the, the yeah, combo and the follows up on scout. damage. Yeah, exactly. And he just plays that role really, really well. And uh, like I I've seen a lot of players underrate him. So yeah. I don't know. This, this I might be overrating him. It looks like they have quite defined roles and they really know what they're doing. Uh, as in the team dynamics, and I think that's why they've sort of come up with this roster uh Sort of out yeah. of nowhere, and they're playing with their roles and playing else pretty well, and they're outclassing a lot of the other Prem teams um, that have had what most people would consider to be a better or better players, with the exception of like Josh and Damul, who I guess are the standout guys. Um, but Nerdrage, they used to be one of the best teams in that regard for playing their roles and the team dynamics with the old lineup. Uh, obviously, they played with Medico being that hard pocket role for so long uh but now they've got a spanner in the works and it's eliker plays very differently to how namtak did uh glastry plays very differently to how medico did and namtak on scout also plays very differently to how blade did so it's it's a very different team to the nerd rage of last season and i think they're going to be struggling to reach that playoff spot that they are probably aiming for uh, i don't think any team would want to go into a consecutive season with a lower aim than they had previously. Yeah. So, but yeah, I think you're right. They, they're just going to take uh, quite a while for them to actually figure out like uh, their new playstyle and what everyone's role is and by the time they figure it out it's probably too late. Like that's uh, what it looks like right now, but you know, maybe it's going to happen in the next map. Uh, <laughs> we can't really write uh, write them off quite yet. But yeah, it's definitely looking uh, pretty dicey for them so far. 
Uh, I, I do hope to, to see them uh, kind of figure it out and, and find peace with their, their new roles and, and kind of play to their players' strengths instead of just uh, following the system that they've uh, just kind of built up. So, you know, just uh, sometimes just switching classes will actually just throw off your team immensely, even though it's kind of the same players. It's only one new player, I think. But, uh, you know, that can be enough to just throw it off like, quite a bit and uh, just change the dynamic. But, you know, like, who do you uh, think, uh, like, do, do you think uh, this is going to be a better map for um, uh, Nerd Rage than Badlands, or do you think it's going to be more of the same? Um, well, there's a couple of things that I'm considering in this. Based on results, it doesn't look like Nerd Rage are consistent on Reckoner, and with teams that play well um, in terms of their fundamentals and the dynamics within the team, which is what we were just talking about uh, in regards to LEGO, I think newer maps and different maps to... Like, obviously, if you play Badlands for years, you'll get used to it on every class, and you'll just have... You'll be quicker at coming up with ideas of what to do. I think yeah. people will be a bit slower on Reckoner, and I think that plays a lot into LEGO's hands. I think this is... I'd expect it to be pretty one-sided uh, in favor of LEGO, especially because, like I was saying, soldiers can be quite powerful on this map. Um, and I think there's that the soldier synergy that Nerd Rage used to have is lacking right now. I don't think Korbak and Glastri are nearly as good uh, as a duo and as within their chemistry as uh, Korbak and Medical used to be. But Josh and Demul have done this for. I mean, they've come back now, but they've played this soldier duo uh, in seasons past, and it's been a really good one. So I'm expecting yeah. those guys to have good games on Reckoner. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't be too surprised. Reckoner is one of those maps that seems surprisingly good for roamers. Uh, I'm not quite sure what it is. It should be bad with all the open spaces that uh, you can just have uh, scouts shut you down. But it just seems like uh, the under under ways passage and, and toxic. Like those areas are just enough that uh, Romer can actually have some really standout games on this map. It doesn't happen every time, obviously, but it just seems like a relatively good Romer map. And I'm not quite sure why, because there's a lot of stalemates on last where you'd think you just send in a roamer over and over, right? But uh, that's not actually how last is played, because that just does not work. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, this could map could just come down to put who's better at pushing last and how you break it and how good you are at holding. We saw Lego actually yeah. uh, come up with some really strong forward holds on, on this where they would just, like, they would stop seven. Uh, you know, who was just uh, an unstoppable team, or was it Crowns at the time? I forget, but like basically, Lego was not supposed to be as good as they were, but they they just kind of figured out a really good hold, and, and that caused them to win the map, and that is uh, something they might ret repeat. We'll see. Um, and what we were talking about before, briefly, um, last fixture, Domo had quite a big play on, on Reckoner, I believe. Um, and in that regard, or in that vein, uh, playmaking is going to be quite a big thing on Reckoner, because I think teams will default a lot of the time to just playing stalemate situations, because it's, it's simpler and more comfortable. Um, we are about to go live, but continuing that thought, I think... If Romer's not too great on this map, I think we might see Demul go on to Sniper, and he had a really good Sniper performance from the two minutes that he played uh, on Badlands Beta. Yep, he is uh, known, at least in part, for his uh, great Sniper play. Uh, we'll see if uh, that will come into play at all. But it uh, looks like uh, Eleko is going to play on uh, his own right side here, while Lego will just kind of play more in the own choke while Demul on uh, the enemy crate. He gets eventually knocked down there by Korbak, but he actually does more damage here, but uh, Josh will be the first one to go down underneath the point. They go, they're kind of bunched up right now, so they're playing together, but they also are in danger of taking all the same damage, and so far they haven't really made any headway. Ombrak is in a lot of uh, trouble though, and oh my god, Domo with a really clutch pipe there, just uh, hitting uh, the, and doing all the damage, but now Lego, they're being sandwiched, but they just have just enough to, to make it out alive. That was, uh, that was a pretty intense mid. Yeah, it was quite a bit more chaotic than I thought it would be. Um, nothing re was really happening at the start of the mid, just like a bit of damage being traded, and then I think one pick goes either way, and then everyone just sort of masses into a big wall of DM fight, and uh, both medics go down, but Lego oh, managed to survive. Oh my god, the like big shot from Glastry. Dimble. 
Ooh, he's got to be feeling confident after that. Maybe he's going to step his game up this map. Uh, with that one pick, it looks like Nerdridge are looking to push. They don't want LEGO to establish a hold here. Uh, Docker Phil's actually caught a fat rocket and flies into the air. Doesn't really get a great surf and gets the follow-up frag. Glastry on a killing streak right now. Korback with another frag. And Yippie's on the back half, but I think Nerdridge will be able to react to this and uh, lock it down. Well, it's only fast enough. Yeah, they, they do eventually pick up uh, Yippie, but they, they might have uh, gone too much out of position. But Neo actually gets a second scout kill here as well. The bull eventually does uh, force off the Uber, but Lego, they are in disarray right now. They're just going to have to back off and re group themselves. Otherwise, they're going to be in a lot of trouble. But uh, the middle here will definitely go to Nerd Raid here. And the Lego, they, they should be okay. They have a slight Uber advantage, but I don't think it's going to be something that they can actually use. But of course, it will prevent Nerdwit from doing an easy push and here goes they're actually gonna try to push in here they have one scout through Toxic but I think that the rest of Nerdwit are a little bit apprehensive about actually pushing in and the scout actually made it out alive as well and the Phil actually goes down to Korback I didn't see where Korback went in but yeah. he got him but Korback was just hiding in the corner at the choke uh, and he wasn't checked as the Lego players were walking past and peeking and uh, he just he walks around the corner and gets two rockets off onto oh, Dr. Wow. Phil so now 80% advantage for uh, Ombrak and the boys on Nerd Raid, and they're going to be looking to walk in here. I think uh, Demul's setting up to go for a bomb as they walk in. Uh, he's kind of on the point, ready to jump, but I, it doesn't look like he's going. They're trying to force with spam right now, uh, I think, but they're not really getting much damage off. Uh, and it looks like Nerd Raid will be able to take this point and have probably a 50% uber advantage by the time they're going into last. Yeah. See, we actually have a pause right now, so we, we, we get some time to, to analyze this. There's a sticky trap that's been spotted in lobby here. So I don't think uh, Dome is going to be able to, to slow them down a whole lot. Potato is sniper yeah. where? He's walking, he's jumping up onto the, uh, the sight line that you can get into lobby from the position by the pillar. Um, and it looks like if, if Nerdrage don't see him early enough, uh, I think it's on... The Korbak's in lobby and he could probably spot Potato, but if they don't see that he's sniping from that sight line, which is quite a common one, so in fairness they should expect it, um, he could have a good entry pick before they are having their uber. And with the time frame that Nerdrage have to use this uber, they have one player on the cap right now and they've got five people looking to push last. If Potato gets a pick, then they've only got four people that can properly push with that uber. And against with two off classes and Dr. Phil on 50%, that would be quite difficult. So, eyes on Potato for the unpause because if he can get a pick, it can really bring things back into Lego's favor. Yeah, other than that, we see Josh on the, the battalion's backup. The battalion's backup gives you 20 extra health, I want to say. No, uh, I think that's the conch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, the conch heals you, right? For like uh, a certain amount. Oh yeah. And then I the, don't know enough about banners. Yeah, it it is twenty, and then so you can go up to three sixty, uh, overheal. Uh, it's kind of disgusting. <laughs> it it <looks laughs> you feel that way sometimes, and then of course when you pop it, you you have damage resistance. Uh, it's really heavy. Uh, it could be very difficult to actually chew through. So like that's he's obviously not going to be able to build it in time. I want to say, I'd be very surprised. I think it's five hundred damage you need to do with the. The battalion's back up. It's something like that. Uh, like the banners all have different values. Yeah, I think the conch is 480. Uh, I think the buff banner is 600. Yep. I'm not entirely sure what the battalions is. Yeah, I feel like the battalion is in between the buff banner. Yeah, and it would make sense. Conch. Yeah, the conch is, is easy, and the, the the buff banner is very difficult, and you don't <laughs> even get the, a passive bonus with the buff banner. So I like think that's... one thing that um people haven't really caught on to is that using a buff banner with quickie bombs is unreal because it eliminates the fall off damage uh, and also gives you the mini crits so you can hit like 130 damage stickies from any range with the quickie bombs and it's oh damn it's quite powerful so i'd like to see that being run if uh if domo feels up to it and if josh wants to use the last of the three banners um i don't think josh has had much time to build this uh conch no. So, I think if he can get enough spam out during this fight and sort of play it passively, it might be able to make the difference. Uh, but, like I said, it's on potato. 
Demul Demul and Domo are in a good position in lobby right now to spot for Potato, um, and they should be able to get enough spam off to to force Ombrac early if uh, if he doesn't end up going down to Potato. Um, from what you've seen in the first few minutes, actually, we do have an unpause. Oh, that was it a looks trick like one. we might be going live soon. Probably just to get someone back on the server, if that's what it was. Yeah. But uh, you were asking if there was anything I had seen or something? Yeah. Um, from the first few minutes of this, is there anyone that stands out to you? I, I The big double air shot from Glass Tree and uh, the follow-up streak was quite nice. Yeah, uh, he definitely he made a comeback there in turn of our favor. But uh, yep, so far, Tato did nothing. So the Uber is in here, but the sentry has been off for quite a while. They finally do take it down. But this is the thing about this map. You can just kite this for, for days. Finally, Neo will put some time on. That's going to cause Lego to actually move on to it. So he got three players to actually jump onto the point. So this could give uh, Nerd Raider a much better chance. But Joss has actually gotten this banner. He built that way faster than I actually thought he would. And Elko has gone down as well. So this will be a last hold here for Lego. And Joss jumping out very aggressively, takes down Glassy. And uh, Korbak actually hitting some sick rockets on Dimu. Holy crap. That was amazing. Sorry about that, but that was absolutely sick. Korbak demolished Dimu. But uh, yeah, they still lose that, that fight. Smork down indeed, but yeah, Josh with the really fast building, uh, I think that's been a regular occurrence so far and uh, I think Phil managed to hold on, so they should be looking to take an Uber in here, Josh leading it, Domo taking a flash as well, uh, Ombrak with the counter pop, and he hasn't needed to flash, so this favors Nerdrage if only they don't bleed any players, Domo trades for Korbak and Namtak overextends, so if Nerdrage overcommit here, it should favor Lego, but the height advantage is just too much for them to break, so they're not going to be able to walk in here. Um, Josh did die, so they don't have the banner anymore, and I think it's just going to go back to a stalemate. Uh, I don't know if we have any off classes yet, but I would expect to see that pretty soon. Last time there was a stalemate, um, before it even got to the Ubers, Nerdrage were looking to push uh, like a dry... They were just dry pushing from toxic and it didn't really work but I don't know if they'll change their approach this time it does look like they're gonna wait till they get the uber. Until he's arrow building uh, his little heart out so it looks like they will get this uh, in time they're doing kind of fine here Dr. Phil has his uber now and so does Ombrak so things will just slow down and I, I don't think we see a sniper from either team so this is just uh, how do you actually create plays here on this map I don't know, news. Do, do you actually know, or is it just impossible? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know anything, dude. Um, I quite like... I, I don't think it's... A lot of the time, I think just a solo bomb isn't really good. I like to see double sacks, and... Because I think it, it changes more about how the, the fight goes, and you can play more about, like, more to baiting people and playing rotations and that kind of stuff. So I like to see a double sack. Um, it looks like Korbak's... Getting ready to do something, I want to say. Uh, he's known for his crazy jump, so he is actually trying oh, to there we go. in now. Yeah, oh, he changed his mind. He, or he went for the demo instead. He actually makes it out alive there, so yeah, good good job by him. He went in there, he didn't see what he, some, anything he liked, and he actually made it out alive. That's kind of rare. Uh, the scouts from Lego were, were kind of really far back, and so was Phil. They, they were really hell-bent on protecting Phil. And Korbak saw that, so he just uh, tried to go for the demo. He didn't get the demo, and he went back out. So good play by Korbak there. Just a really good decision making. But uh, we are left in the same situation that we were in before. Um, if you're trying to make like a team play, you can try to, to go under, but you just drop down really suddenly, and then you, you push in like uh, to a certain degree. And then if anyone is uh, holding down on the ground or is randomly trying to go in there, you're going, oh my god, look at that. He just rushes down Domo. And then uh, almost take down Potato as well, or at least he hit a nice shot on him. But uh, the demo man going down, that's going to definitely give them space to actually walk in here uh, without uh, worrying about sticky traps. So uh, pretty crazy play there by Neo, just uh, basically making it on his own. And now the Uber is so much better for Ombrak, he only popped it now, and the Uber is basically gone for Lego. So Lego, they're going to have to scatter here and just do their best to come back or even get out. But Josh... Uh, was doing quite a lot of damage in that Uber and he is behind right now, but I think he should have his banner up. 
Um, if he can get that popped and meet his team, they should be able to take a good fight. But Neo has actually gone back to meet him and Namtak as well. So he does go down and that banner will have gone to waste. Um, and with the Mool down as well, there's two picks for Nerd Rage. It's even Ubers otherwise, but I think they're looking to use this advantage to push, Peter. Yeah, it looks like uh, they're just going to go in on the man advantage. They're going on the right side here. There is a heavy, however, and uh, Dr. Phil is just uh, doing his damage, just healing him like crazy. But actually, the heavy is healing a bunch of pipes, but it looks like it's just not going to be enough. Uh, and that's just uh, this last push. In a nutshell, this whole last point is so difficult to actually make any push work on. But now we'll see if uh, it goes the other way here. So pushing second is very difficult as well, but... No, Lego being up three players, that's going to be more than enough to actually cause people to go back. Timur will just get pelted down there by Namtak. He was trying to get for, go for the medkit, but he didn't quite get it in time. So now it's a full Uber advantage, or blo not a Uber advantage for anyone. They both have Ubers, is what I meant to say. And Nier is on Sniper, and Timur is down. So this is a really good time for Nier to actually try to make him make him play. And he goes in there and he misses the demo man. So he's not feeling happy about that one. Josh is in quite a precarious position right now. He's open to two sides of the map, and unless he's playing pretty on his feet, uh, he might get caught off here. Uh, it, Dr. Phil's playing in a pretty safe position, so it doesn't look like Neil's going to be able to get too much, but uh, I feel like Nerd Rage are going to adapt their strategy just now. It looks like they're moving heals towards cargo, so I don't know if they might go for another soldier bomb. Um, but if, if I were on either of these teams, I'd think that this sniper duel favors Demul because he's he's been one of the best snipers in Europe uh, when he used to play in yeah. previous iterations of LEGO. So, and in the last map, he had I think he played it for one life and got four kills in two minutes. So, Demul's pretty nuts as sniper. Yep, and he proves you right, just as you you say that uh, he, he takes down Neo and Korbak even going down to Josh as well. So now Demul is just moving forward there. It's another nice shot. So, Lego, they are just, they have all the momentum right now. And Ombrak, I think he's just running, trying to just save his Uber. Like, he doesn't care about anyone. He moved with the third headshot in a row here. And uh, Ombrak, he's just tried to save his Uber, but, oh, he actually dropped the potato. I, I mean, I don't, I don't even blame him. Like, if he's just going to pop there, I don't know. He, that, that's not the worst drop I've ever Demo. seen. Demo! Uh, headshot after stop. headshot. Yeah. Crazy. Korbak does actually find the opportunity and he does deal with him there, so that will be the end of Demul sniping for I think at least this round. Uh, Dr. Phil though still has the full uber advantage and they have and both their scouts alive with Josh and Domo. Uh, I think they oh, also Korbak have the battalion. Dr. Phil, Dr. Phil. Oh. takes one round. Oh, he actually popped. All right. Okay, it's a great play there by by Korbak. Uh, Lego they will go in and they haven't dealt with the sentry. Oh, now they do. And uh, they're trying to play the point, but uh, that can be very dangerous here. Josh actually does take down the demo man. That's going to actually be enough. So Dr. Phil getting forced there was a blessing in disguise, I suppose, as they managed to get yeah. the first point here. I think uh, they were lucky in that Josh was already halfway through using the battalion's backup as he got forced, so it didn't slow them down too much. Um, so they were able to just take the fight into last and win it with the banner. And right. that's something that you were saying it's quite hard to make plays on this map. You can just play the stalemates with banners and then you just create another advantage. So Lego are probably favored when Josh is running these banners. And looking at the mid fight, uh, there's quite early aggression from Josh and the Lego soldiers on the left side. Uh, they get two picks onto Glass Renew. Korbak as well, Josh dies for it, but that's almost all the Dragon classes down for Nerd Rage. It's just Ombrak and Eliker backing up, uh, but they are on the chase. Yeah, the moves definitely. He found the medic. Hits a nice first rocket in. Nice. Kicked him down. He, he dies in the process, but uh, Eliko almost dies there. He jumps back, but uh, great chase there by the move. Takes down the medic. That's going to be a full Uber advantage for Dr. Phil. They they might wait for some spawners. I I think I saw Domo being spine spawned there. Then. No, he was still alive, so it was someone else. But uh, I think there are only four in this push if they push right now. Uh, but they are pushing right now, so they don't care. They are they're feeling confident, and that could be a very dangerous thing for Lego. Uh, Josh actually going down here as well. Quebec eventually going down. And Lego, they've gotten a lot of time on the point. That's good for them, but I, I think they just pushed too early there. Four on six. Yeah, you're right. It was a nice idea to push while the medic's still dead. Uh, so the players in last don't have heals, but going into a big glass when they have five players alive, it's hard to get a focus target and pin someone down unless you're playing really aggressive and like denying the right areas at the right time. And with only three players uh, going, uh, like with the push, it's going to be hard. So 
at the end of the day, it wasn't very well executed. It was a good idea, but I don't think they had the the coordination right uh, down properly. Um, Albrecht with a bit of an advantage, and I think they are going to be looking to push this from Cargo Beater. Yeah, the wall uh, trying to put uh, the hurt on Neo, but uh, oh my god, it's actually a crit screen, so the advantage they, they, they did not realize. People are getting thrown into the skybox there. Yippee, even cratering, uh, he, he ate a crit rock and just surfed all the way into the skybox. And Classy with a, I think, a 4k there on that crit screen. So completely blindsiding Lego and wiping them. And now they have another crit unless they picked up the Uber. Nope, they did not. So Ombrak is just going to stay on the crit screen here. But uh, you are actually allowed to pick up the Medigon. So Lego, they might expect uh, a slow Uber coming out, uh, or maybe not. Well, the last crits did pay off pretty well, so I think Ombrak's deciding to roll with it. Um, it's 20% away before they have it, and with such a wide open last, as long as they get a decent sightline, it should be easy enough for Elikor to hit a good sticky. Neo goes down, so it's going to slow down the push, but they're going to have to be wanting to use this uh, crits. There's going to be a sentry as well, I think, on the right side of last. Uh, it's actually on the left, in front of the point, uh, as they're moving into lobby. The camera's on Elikor right now. Let's see what he can do with this crit sticky. There's a lot of people bunched up on the right side. And he's just looking for it. I don't know how many sticks he has reloaded, but the time's running out and he needs to get something done. He's deciding to move towards the top left because it's a better sightline for him. They're walking in now. He's charging the sticky. He sees Dr. There Phil, shoots the sticky, and he doesn't get anything with the first one. Doesn't get anything with the second. Josh goes down early, but it doesn't look like they've got anything. And yeah. with the Uber that Dr. Phil now has, they should be looking to repush beat him. Yep. That was a complete disaster. They they, they dawdled so long. The actually Illico actually hit a bunch of stiggies on on some some players there on the right side, but he he wasn't crits at that point. So a bit of a missed opportunity. And and also like the longer they wait, the more there's going to be like a level three century instead of a level one, like that kind of stuff. Uh, time just really runs out for you on this map. So yeah, good hold there by Lego, but also a bit of a a slow. Uh, push in there, and now they're going to be faced with this weird situation where they're building a crit creek that will just never beat an Uber unless Phil really messes up and has like a fat finger and misses his <laughs> mouse button or something. I uh, think I, yeah, go on. The, the error that a lot of people make when they're on crits is they feel like they have to get the medic, and when you have a crits advantage, you don't even need to get the medic. There were so many players bunched up on the right side as oh. the crits comes in from Blaster and they get the force. Now it oh. looks like all the Uber energy. <laughs> Kiting away as the Lego players are so aggressive and they're locking down some of these frags. Potato in a one field, <laughs> potato and gets the jack frag. Glastry the jack gets the consolation frag on the doctor. And the pistol on the Glastry as well. That's a 3k on the, the Uber engineer as he pushes out. I think he's gonna have to go back to, to last year and switch off. Like he was obviously pushing on engineer because they, they wanted a sentry on last just in case. But uh, yeah, he, he's actually running back. So Lego, <laughs> they're just all running around right now, going back to spawn and switching and, and doing all sorts of things. Is he actually carrying the sentry around? And uh, still it does look like it. They're pushing the sentry up into lobby. Uh, big advantage for the crits on oh. but they don't have it quite yet. Sentry down. And uh, Josh going down as well to a nice pipe. Uh, actually trades with Elecor, uh, so that's pretty good. But uh, Domo going down, that's definitely going to cause Lego to fall back and not contest second here. And Ombrak, I think Glass is about to get the uh, crit squeak, so let's see if he can actually make it happen here. I mean, there's a scout with him as well. Uh, they, they do get the first kill, the, the move is down, but Ombrak uh, died very quickly as well. So this might have failed, but they might also have done enough damage. Kovac coming in here, doing a ton of damage on the point, but they uh, couldn't quite uh, do enough of the damage here to actually make it work. So uh, a really intense push right now. Elecor is uh, being pressured by a scout and a soldier as well, so he could go down. I don't think he has anything loaded. Never mind, I was wrong. He's going to put up a sticky trap. But yeah. uh, nope, Ombrex now finally back on Uber. They should have known going into that last that they didn't have too much time to uh, make that push work before the spawners came in. And it looks like they were going to the point, and when the spawners uh, came to the fight, they didn't really adapt to it. Um, we do actually have Demul on spy he in the, the lobby. Scout he's just going building. for the scout oh, that's building. That's Cheeky mean. little pick for Demul, and I think he's probably just going to go back to last and uh, look for a sack right now. But interesting choice for the uh, <laughs> the backstab when he <laughs> probably could have uh, repositioned and gone for something a bit more pivotal. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I guess he just wanted to poke fun at Neil. 
I don't know, he's still playing spot. He just went back into spawn and then just like decided, uh, no, I'm the just going back out. Yeah, you wouldn't expect this for sure. Like, I don't know, I assume they, they saw him actually run towards spawn. So they're probably good, but at the very least, he's going to be able to tell his team where they're actually pushing from. You see Korvac, or sorry, Ombrak underneath you, get, getting ready to go up, and Korvac will actually go down to Potato. So uh, Timur is now in position, just calling the medic position. And I, I think, like, I don't think Lego's actually going to move on this, but, you know, Timur can just call out everything, so Lego, they will be able to respond yeah, appropriately. In this situation, where they've got all this information about uh, what Nerd Ridge are doing on second, with one round up, Lego don't really need to do anything. Demil's actually in position behind the medic, and he's just holding off on the decloak because he knows it's not a perfect time right now. He gets the decloak behind the point, he hasn't been spotted, ah. but Neo does see him just in time. I think that was a one shot as well. Uh, he only had 100 HP because he was using the, the knife that makes you run faster, but you have 100 less, uh, or 25 less HP. So I think he just got one shot at there. Uh, those are the risks you run. <laughs> the, the Spencer has gone down. That's about as much action as we can see. But that, no, actually, no, they, they did move forward. There. They, they got to the lobby. So Lego just kind of gave that up after they lost one. Korbak just flew in. I'm not sure what jump he did there, but it was insane. And he gets a really good rocket on Dr. Phil as he leaves the spawn and hits the second to force him. So incredible play from Korbak. That was a, a really good suicide play. And Domo dies to a sticky trap of Elikor, so this is a great chance for Nerdrage to get around on the board. They're moving in, get the dispenser pick earlier. They're looking to push on the right side. Oh, there's Josh a counter has got the banner, so that's going to be the saving grace if they can make it work. Yippee with the one heavy frag onto Neo. But the frags are going the way of Nerdrage, and it looks like they should be able to do this, but there's not enough focus fire, and they're playing it so passively. At this point, the LEGO spawners are going to come back in, and it's it's so hard for Nerdrage to capitalize on that because they took it a bit too slowly, and LEGO with a successful hold. Uh, really oh. impressive for Josh to get that banner off and to make the difference in the fight. Yeah, that was uh, like just the fact that he stayed alive and managed to pop that banner it caused everyone to die so slowly that they got respawners and were able to hold. Josh almost got Ombrak there on exit as well. He was like a millisecond away from being able to shoot the second rocket, but he died just before he could do so. So Ombrak will survive. He's going to be at a slight disadvantage, but I don't think uh, Lego will actually push on this. Uh, it's a very small advantage, and pushing second on this map is a nightmare. Oh, so, uh, we see Neo on Sniper, and uh, Potato has gone back on NG here. So, they, well, they might be looking to, to move out here. They're the uh, forward hold in lobby. It did involve that dispenser in a corner. For easy spam forever, but no, no, no. None of that, as Neo actually takes down Dr. Phil. Really huge Sniper. I didn't see the angle, but uh, that's a huge pick. Oh my god. And this is another great chance for Nerd Rage to get around on the board. Uh, with Dr. Phil dead and there's no heals just now, he does just come up to the spawn now. They're trying the same push on the right side. I don't think Josh has a banner quite yet, and they're dealing with this entry really early, so this is a good clean entry on the last. They pop the Uber now across the point, they get the frag onto Potato and onto the Mool. Domo's nowhere near the last point, and they should be able to just play the cap and win this. They just need to focus some frags. Ombra goes down, but the heals shouldn't matter, and they do win the round. Really huge snipe there from Neo, just completely opening it up, sniping Dr. Phil, and uh, the push is going to be relatively easy. So 1-1 one, one here. Nerd Rage, they're coming back. They're not out of this yet. They're putting up a fight. And these these matches, they're really low scoring, but they're very intense at the same time. So um, this could go anyone's way right now. And I think both teams have won a mid so far, uh, with LEGO looking slightly stronger. But yeah, let, let's see. There's a soldier jumping in very quickly here. Korbak uh, not really getting a whole lot done, but uh, Domo going down to Neo is going to be a nice consolation frag here. But uh, Nefla going down and Lego just moving across the point, and everyone from Nerd Rake, they're just on the slope right now. So that's going to mean that they're getting ready to hightail it out. And Neo is in the corner. Actually gets an arrow. Uh, so he was about to die, but uh, great arrow there. Uh, the arrows are in full effect. And it's going to be a pretty solid uh, second hold coming up here for Nerd Rake, I think. Yeah, Nerdridge were able to keep Ombrak alive and keep enough players uh, alive to mount a defense on second. Dimul goes down. Josh going so weak that uh, Dr. Phil has to force the Uber and they're not going to be able to get anything with it, so they have to run out. If he tries to make a play, and I think he does manage to force Ombrak with barely any damage, uh, but without much going either way for. Uh, in the way of 
<laughs> sorry, uh, three frags for Nerd Rage, and they walk into the point. Uh, they will be capping out just now, uh, and they deny two of the spawners. The mules on sniper. Uh, so if he can keep up the form that he's been having so far this match, he should be able to get some sort of pick to slow down Nerd Rage. But Corbeck has jumped uh, behind from underneath, so maybe he's just gonna pull some Lego players back. But uh, no, he's actually finally been been dealt with right now, and just pushing into the second. It didn't work out for Lego before, and this time around again. Now it was basically the exact same situation, just in favor of Nerd Rage, and they had the same result where they just get completely outspanned and outmuscled, and uh, eventually have to retreat. The medic does survive though, and they're still building with a scout, and they, they will get a bunch of spawners. Lego, they're not really putting pressure on mid right now. I think they were a bit slow there, they just wanted to heal up to make sure. But uh, we might see an Uber coming in here, or at least an Uber force. But no, it's just going to be a straight up fight. It's going to be an Uber view Uber battle right now, and Potato jumps in, gets double uh, shot there by Neo, and uh, all of a sudden, it's looking pretty bad for Lego, but they do have a slightly bigger Uber, but uh, they are two players down, so they're just going to retreat here. I really like that decision from Nerd Rage. Um, they had given up position on the mid fight, but they knew that it was even Ubers and they still had the point cap. So they decide to take the Uber trade in to defend their spawn advantage, and it works out for them. They win the fight. So much damage being put out onto the LEGO players. Dr. Phil and Domo both going down. Elikra is kind of on his own. Ombrak has to run away. It's going to be really dire straits for him. He is going to go down to Potato in the end. And it looks like the end of that fight results in LEGO walking into the mid. <laughs> Neil going for a 2v1 on point for some, some reason. I'm not particularly sure why. Uh, but LEGO are going to cap that off and they have denied the spawn for Neo and Ombak. So with the cap now going out on second, it looks like Nerd Rage are quite content to just give up the last point, even though there's only a 20% advantage for them, um, or for LEGO even. So LEGO are just taking the second point here. I think with 1-1 one, one and 5 minutes, or it's just under 6 minutes left, they're gonna look for some play to be made. Um, they're looking yeah. to get some information about the gun, but they don't Those have any pick passes and Josh there. isn't on any banners. Oh my god, did, did you see that? Uh, Domo tried to jump in for the suicide and Korbeck perfectly predicted it. Just bumped into him midair and then just like shot him down. Pretty beautiful deny there by Korbeck. Not quite as flashy as uh, things we've seen, but uh, beautiful play in my book. Really well played. Yeah, it was uh, a <laughs> good read. Uh, I don't, I, since Ali started doing that, I think a lot of demos uh, like to go for that play, and I think it's becoming more and more expected, but when it works, it works like a charm. Um, I don't think they decided to pick anything despite Domo dying. They could have gone to the spawn and taken a banner or a pick Oh, glass. here comes Domo, I think. Oh, they're actually going to send in the soldier instead, maybe? Man, they're, they're really uh, teasing us here. I can just see Domo just uh, walking back and forth, uh, getting ready to jump in, but uh, he does get shot down here by Korbeck. But now Korbeck is not in position anymore, and here we come. He comes to jump in, but the medic is in spawn. Oh, that's sad. Uh, it's so passive play right there by Ombrak. He, he predicted that perfectly, so he's going to be safe. And now Lego, they're going to be without a demo for a while here. But, uh, I still think they might be able to. Oh, my, actually, Josh getting caught out here by Korbeck. Korbeck playing so well in his last hold so far, and uh, this could actually get dicey for Lego. It's still a very difficult uh, second to actually push on. Uh, Demo is trying his best to just spam everyone, but he can't spam every entrance, and uh, eventually he's gonna run out of rockets. And uh, here we go, the, the force has been, uh, been uh, made here onto Lego, so Dr. Phil having to, to force here, and uh, see Demo trying to jump in onto the medic, but he only gets one rocket off there, and now they're gonna have to play with a uber disadvantage here, so really good pressure coming up from Nerd Rage. Yeah, and we do see Potato picking up the sniper. Um, I thought that since Josh died there, he would have gone for the banner because they're not really getting anything out of these stalemates. As Josh does go down, um, Ombrak and Bat and after taking the Uber in from lower, uh, I don't know that they'd be able to get Phil with it, but they got the frag onto Josh and they've taken the point, so they have the chance here oh to use... Oh my god! Nice pipe by Domo, holy crap. That was really... There was a callback to try behind. In. He's in on top, Ombrak gets two rockets, oh. but it's not quite enough. Nice pipe there by Elecor. So just uh, some really nice rockets and pipes uh, coming out here. The incredible play by, by both teams, but uh, as it turns out, that's going to be uh, a basically a stalemate uh, situation right now. They go in a slightly better position. They are actually moving on here, so no stalemate at all. I thought they were going to be more tentative, but 
I underestimate them. They move forward here. And uh, if they're fast, they can move in on last, but uh, I, I don't think you can actually do it on this because of how big it is. Uh, I think Potato is going to be looking to get uh, an entry pick for them here. They don't have enough of an advantage to do anything with it. Um, he's walking up to the right side, gets sight line onto the soldier, but doesn't hit the shot. Uh, and I think they're just going to be playing it slow from now. There is, they're peaking top left, Lego, and Josh goes down and so much damage onto Phil and uh, Domo that they have to force, but they get the frags onto Glacier and Elicor. If they can just deal with the sentry, they've got a really good uh, oh position thing. Potato hitting point. more and more shots. And uh, if Lego, if they can scatter right now, they, they might be able to push in, but no, they lost a few too many, I think. But if they go outside and start arrow building, they could actually get another uber advantage push going. Uh, we'll see how they play this. Uh, it looks like they don't quite have the, the players to be able to arrow build right now. Two Gunboat Soldier and a Sniper, and neither of those are really in a position to, to hurt themselves very fast. So, so unfortunately for LEGO, but they do still have a tiny advantage, but uh, it's going to be hard to actually move on it. But uh, we'll see if they're actually able to do so. Uh, and when they're playing these stalemate situations, I mean, there's only a minute and a half left now, so it's a bit... Uh the time's sort of gone for it, but I feel like Demu has been doing so much more on Sniper than anyone else on the server. <laughs> and I feel like yeah. it's worthwhile just losing your roamer to get someone that has that much impact on a pick class. Because the last two times he's done it, he's just had these insane headshot sprints where he gets four shots, like four picks one after another, and Potato hasn't matched that, and Neo hasn't matched that, so... If I was Lego, I would have gone for Demu sniping, but they're gonna have to deal with Potato sniping now, and... With a minute left, it's on LEGO to be able to get the round here. There is Korbak holding really close to the right. He's peeking Oh, round. Yippie actually catches uh, Korbak and then Potato uh, body shots him down. Great play there. And uh, Yippie, he's uh, found the sentry, so he's going to try and take it down. Uh, he's got it down really low. The sentry has like 5 HP. Finally, they get it down. So LEGO, they've made a lot of headway in here. This is uh, looking very uncomfortable for uh, Umbrak, and he finally pops it out here. Dr. Phil will pop the counter Uber and the, the demo man gets taken down even with a bad uh, beat shot there. Now putting time onto the point. This looking so good for Lego and they actually get it. Really, really cross good push. Oh my god. That was clinically done by Lego. They took it one step at a time. They dealt with Korbak when they thought that he would be close on the right side. That was the entry pick so that they could walk in on the flank for free deal with the sentry before it has any impact on the fight and by the time that they have to use their uber they've kited so well that they've got all the position on the point they got elicor out of position and with no stickies it's easy enough for them to play the point and win the fight afterwards so lego fully deserved that after that push i think that was excellent play from them and i think they quite deserved the six points from this fixture yep a uh, really strong play um, a much better fight here on the second map from Nerd Rage, though, it ha has to be mentioned. Uh, they put up a really good fight, and LEGO, they were really struggling at times and by making some pushes work. And whenever LEGO, they were playing a bit too aggressively, maybe not giving quite the respect to Nerd Rage that they deserve, LEGO got punished instantly. So, you know, that, that's what you want to do. When people play, like, quote unquote, too aggressively, you just shut them down and steal their points. Oh, they, they did manage to do that once at least, but uh, turns out that was one time too little. And Lego just uh, clutches <laughs> out at the end there and Denmark Vino. Yeah, I was very impressed by the uh, combo play from Lego. I think uh, in particular Phil and Domo played very disciplined and uh, did exactly what their team needed to be. Those those kind of rock, the roles that you can just rely on, the, the guy that you can always back up to and will always be doing the right thing. It felt like Phil and Domo were just on the same page the whole fixture and it didn't seem like Elicor and Ombrak or even Glastery had quite the same discipline. So I think the the cohesion and the just the general team play from LEGO won it from, from this game because I don't think they were particularly uh, above Nerd Rage in terms of playmaking or DM. But I think they just controlled the game as the team that we know LEGO to have been for seasons and seasons. Uh, and I, I think Nerdridge just didn't quite have an answer for it. Yep, we're going to be looking at some logs. And uh, my MVP for this map is definitely Korvac. He had an absolutely incredible game. He played extremely well, in my opinion. Got so many clutch picks, hit some really nice shots, and just overall was just an absolute beast on the flank. Wasn't quite enough to, to help his team win, but uh, he, he was definitely trying his absolute heart out and 
I'll give him a lot of credit for that. He ended up with 21 kills and 22 deaths. And uh, second in damage, only behind Josh. So a very strong game from him. And then the Glass 3 did better this time around. He, he has a, had a positive yeah. KD and uh, like 100 DPM more or something. But uh, still, he was struggling. I think uh, Potato played quite well as a utility this game. <laughs> he had one <laughs> pretty insane engineer play. Um, it was like a 3 or 4k with the jag frag, as I called it. Uh, and he went 21 for 9 this game. I looked like the LEGO scouts were a lot more comfortable uh, this game. And if we look at the heal spreads just now, it has changed a little bit. More on Elikur, uh less on Glastry and Neo. And I think they did have... It did show that they had a bit more of uh, an impact in fights and they could bring the fight to LEGO more. Uh, whereas things have also switched on Dr. Phil's side of the heal spread, uh, Domo getting most of the heals, Josh a lot less. I noticed they didn't use nearly as many banners, uh, especially in the second half of Reckoner, as they did for most of Badlands. Um, it did secure one the first round for them uh, when Dr. Phil got forced, as Josh had used the banner, yeah. and they got into last with the speed. But aside from that, it didn't really make too much of a difference. Actually, um, now that I think about it, he also held last with the, the battalion's backup against oh, yeah. the Uber. That so, was a really important play, because that was a very good chance for Nerd Rage, and they were doing well with it, but that backup, <laughs> it, it did back up the, the last, and it allowed them to hold that there. And if they had lost that round, it, I think it would have been a different game. So, again, it... it it doesn't feel like there was anyone in particular on LEGO that was standing out, but everyone had their moments, and they all played the role that they needed, uh, that the team required of them. Yeah, I will point out the most important stat was, of course, Airshot, and Domo, a demo man, has the most. That's pretty rare uh, for that demo man to, to top that. And uh, Elicor and Glassy also have three, uh, and Josh only have two, and Demul doesn't have a single Airshot. Like, well, is he even good at the game? Like, is he even good? That's an outrage, to be honest. Like, I don't know if there's any excuse for this, but yeah, you can really tell that LEGO just have... Like, uh, like if he never dies, Potato makes some plays, and he also didn't die a whole lot. I, I, that's probably a little bit unusual, but yeah, just really good play overall. But uh, very entertaining game, even though it's very low score. Yeah, I quite enjoyed it, and I think there was a lot to to read into it, and a lot of interesting things happened, happened throughout this game, but... Enough about our take on it, Peter. I think we have some players in the mumble for interviews. Uh, so let's get their opinions on it. Do you want to ask the first few questions? Yeah, sure. We, we are joined by, by Dr. Phil and Yippie. So uh, congratulations, number one. And uh, number two, uh, it looked very intense or it was very low scoring. Uh, why would it end up that way? Was that uh, intentional or was it just kind of the way it worked out? The, the way the game played out, really. Like we both had uh, a lot of push, both us and Nerd Rage, but like didn't really make anything of them. And yeah, it went okay. a lot of back and forth, fully some Badlands and on Reckoner as well. Yeah, it seemed like on Badlands, uh, the big difference was that uh, you stayed alive while Ombrak uh, uh, died. Like, was that just in the team fights uh, that happened, or was it just the uh, superior Romans, or what do you? I think it was a lot of the team fights. Like I stayed alive in those situations on uh, low HP a lot of the times, but alive nonetheless. It yeah. seemed like um, you guys had a lot more control on Badlands, and a lot of Reckoner was really back and forth in comparison. Yeah. Is there any reason for that? Are you more comfortable on Badlands just from playing it more, or is it something more down to like the strengths of your players or their players? I think it's more like we have to, everybody's played Badlands so much and everybody is comfortable with what they're doing. And we only recently started playing Reckon as a team, so we're kind of still getting into the role of playing that map, I guess. Okay, uh, well, taking it over to Nerdrage's side, Ombrak, probably a bit disappointing result from you today. Uh, and I don't mean to criticize, but I think you had a subpar performance, especially on Badlands, to how you usually play. Was there anything in particular that maybe threw you guys off today? You mean me or as a team? As a team. <laughs> because I was really <laughs> bad on Badlands as well. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, we're a bit disappointed, of course, but like to be honest, considering everyone's like the Lego's momentum and ours, like it's 
I, I expected them to win, and to be honest, I expected to, them to win by maybe a bit uh, bigger margin. So, I, 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 my calls were on point on balance. I dropped a lot, and then like I'd like a bit down, I guess. Uh, we beefed. Uh, I think we won mid, which uh, which is a bit unusual for us. And we had some opportunities to push on the last, uh, but we failed. And uh, yeah, I don't maybe like the spirits got down. At this moment when we failed, like the atmosphere is on point and we should have focused last cap, didn't happen. And I don't know, it feels so so close. Like both games, it was 1 0 for so long on Badlands, and then they scored the last minute, uh, like the last seconds for Reckon. I, I don't really know what to to say about the games. Yeah, I think I have played, I didn't play really well. We had really bad team fights, like we kept. Uh, giving them bodies at some point where we shouldn't and uh, I think that's what made the difference at some point Yeah, from my point of view um, On both maps there was a lot of times where you guys had really good advantages and really clear chances of uh, Making things happen or taking points or even rounds, but it was just small mistakes or uh, small like really good plays from individuals on Lego that would just shut down or make it so much harder to capitalize on those advantages um, I don't know if Beater will agree with me, but I think one thing that played a lot into Lego's hand was the use of banners that Josh had. Yeah. Uh, I I think it only worked once, really. Uh, I, I wouldn't put. I wouldn't say that's what made the difference in the end, but yeah, maybe uh, I don't know. I didn't feel like it had in, impact. Sorry. Uh, okay. I just like they they played a bit better, of course, but I think. We, a lot came down to the mistakes we we did on this game. Like they had some plays, but I think we. I don't know. I think there's a lot of of uh, the the results is firstly due of how we played uh, and the just capitalized on our mistakes, which is obviously like the way you win games. But uh, yeah, it's like the smooth mistake mistakes. We we did I think more than them stepping up at some crucial moments. Okay. Um. Well. Enough from the medics, I want to hear from Yippie. Uh, I think you played quite well on both maps. I think you played your role uh, pretty well. Do you have any comments just overall about this game? Mm. Thinking. Yeah, I don't really know. Like, I just like focus on my, my own game. It felt like uh, it did get kind of messy sometimes, but... Uh, like especially in in the beginning, I think of uh, Reckoner and Phil died a ton, but uh, we were I was able to like uh, we were able to like stabilize it a bit. But I I felt like yeah we were definitely a lot more in control of uh, I feel like in every fight on Badlands, mm -hmm. uh, we were, I was uh, a lot more confident on like uh, that we were gonna win it, whereas on Reckoner it felt like we we lost a lot more of these uh, the team fights. And I, I really don't know why it's uh, because it didn't feel like it was just like the map or anything. It just felt like we lost uh, the fights uh, just due to like DM or like how we engaged them. One thing I thought was interesting was um, you and Potato seemed to have much, well, quite a bit better stats on Reckoner, despite it being a lot closer of a game and how it played out. Um, I don't know if that came down to like playing off classes or that kind of thing but is there I any think, reason for that i think it's just due to the fact that the uh, reckoner is first of all uh, like a lot better scout map because a lot of badlands is like badlands last where you can't really do much a scout and the uh, reckoner was also a more uh, there was more pushing and stuff in that it was a, a more um opportunities for us to like get do damage and stuff like that whereas badlands was more of a stalemate a lot of times, I feel like. Okay. Well, uh, I think you and Phil will be pleased with your result tonight. Um, going forward into week three, I think I'm not quite sure what the maps are. Um, it's Gully Wash. Gully Wash Gully Gully and Reckoner. Okay. How do you think the season's going to progress for you guys? I think we can win. I, depending if they've. Uh, I like play like usually do a Basugi sport or. We actually play well. It can go both ways, in my opinion, but I still think we have a fairly good chance of taking it. Yeah, yes. I think 
Judging by results, you guys have been uh, playing pretty well with a lot of the playoff contender teams. Uh, Beto, did you have something you want to say there? Yeah, I was just going to say that the Bazooka Sports have been looking pretty weak so far. Uh, they, they've definitely been struggling. And uh, like, I just want to know, really, like uh, last week you played against Nunya, arguably the, the weakest team. And uh, now you beat uh, Nerd Raids, probably. The second weakest team. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, totally. No, not the weakest team at all. Uh, like a, a middle of the road team that, uh, uh, I don't know, like at least they, they should be kind of similar level to Bazooka Sports, at least going by last week's result. So, like, do you feel like you have proven yourself yet, or do you still have more, like, do you want to show the world? I think it's still. I don't know if we have to prove anything, like, I still feel we're a good team, and we have shown so far, also in the playoffs, that we are a good team. Yeah, I think you guys had a fairly dominant run uh, in the playoffs, and I think yeah. you're proving yourself so far this season. Um, just to take it back to Nerd Rage, Ombrak, I think something I was saying uh, before the game started was being one of the playoff teams of last season, you'd I would expect that you would have similar ambitions for this season, um, <laughs> but I think <laughs> so far it's probably not been going uh, as well as you would have hoped. Is there anything that you feel like you need to address as a team or anything that you need to change in particular that can uh, address the results that you've been having? Um, I, I don't like. I think people should, shouldn't read uh, last season and then say we can copy and paste and do the same because we have so many roster changes like Namtak is playing scout after three seasons of playing a poor demoman role uh, and then we have last three stepping in as pocket where that which is isn't his main or he hasn't played in, in prem before so um i think our season we, we were kind of surprised through uh, psycho sport last last week and I think we have so much room to improve, but I think we we had a, a tiny spike of improvements uh, before the season started. And now I feel like it's like a roller coaster. Like we got five out by Nunia on in ten minutes yesterday on Reckoner, and now we and on like tonight we're really close to to make uh, to get around and, and points. So I think we need to address first of all uh, our lack of stability. You know. Uh, in our results, because we lack uh, some bases to work on, I feel like we, until tonight, we hadn't, uh, we didn't have any set mids for Reckoner. We were kind of going in like, okay, let's see how, what, what's going to happen. And uh, as you can guess, it didn't work quite well. So um, I, I don't know, it feels like starting fresh again with new players. So. Uh, I think we have to make some rundowns on the map, go for the regular map talk, see how we can do, and uh, I think we, we could do better. I'm not expecting many from expecting more from last week's game because we're playing seven, so it's mm -hmm. like gar garbage week. <laughs> um, so and it's on reckoners, so like fuck it, we're just gonna try to work on Gilly Wash and how we can fare for the rest of the season because. If even if we lose next next week, uh, if we have good results after that, we can still make it to playoffs. But it's not really a set objective. Like you know, we have to make playoffs. It's more like I think we can make it. Let's see how we fare. Okay. Uh, well, tickles up then. Commiserations to Nerd Rage. Congratulations, congratulations to Lego. Uh, Beto, do you want to take us out for this one? Uh, I, I actually want to, since this first time YP is actually in here, I want to just hear a little bit more about you. You know, are you you need a little more intention. <laughs> so this is your first season in Prem, right? So uh, can you tell, like, uh, what teams did you play on before Prem, and how did you get picked up into LEGO? Uh, well, it's actually kind of a funny story, because like, uh, I, I played on uh, Dead Eastwards in High, and we got, like, third, I think. Yeah. And uh, after that, I had like a, a bit of a uh, like I was trialing for a bunch of teams, and uh, during this period, like Phil just ad added me and asked if I wanted to trial for Lego. And at that point, I still thought it was like Lego high team, like they oh. play, play high last season. So I just thought like, oh yeah, sure. And uh, I guess the first trial went really well, and so. We just, I just trialed a bunch more with him, and uh, I guess I just fits well within the playstyle of uh, 
of Lego, so I guess that's why they picked me up. Yeah, all right. Well, what's your, what do you feel your role is in the team? What's your mindset when you play? Well, I just try to play like uh, really passive and uh, keep uh, Domor and uh, Phil alive because um, uh, then um, Joss can play a lot more aggressively. And uh, I mean, I, I'm still working out, uh, trying to be a little bit more aggressive. I feel like I miss some opportunities a lot of times. Right. Um, but I mean, as as long as I can keep uh, Domo and and feel alive and follow up on Joss's damage, uh, like it works out well because you can see how much uh, damage like Domo can put out with when he gets like a ton of heals. Yeah, and uh, how how does Prem feel compared to High? Then is it a big jump. Yeah, it's definitely a lot different. Like you can't uh, DM your way as much. Um, soldiers are not as easy to kill. It feels like. Um, yeah, that's. I guess that's really the difference. I mean, it's it's, it's very different uh, from the teams I've played on before in high because we didn't really have like set strats and stuff like this. So it's actually it's really nice playing on a team with uh, with set strategies that uh, that actually like analyzes what the enemy is doing and, and tries to adapt to it and stuff like that. Yep. All right. Uh, and with that, uh, we'll go through. A round of uh, shout outs starting at the bottom. So, Yippie, you get to, to finish here, and uh, you can make some shout outs if you have any, and then we'll go up the list. Well, um, shout outs to uh, Aflawi for being my fan since the beginning and always believing in me. And uh, some, I guess shout out to the Lego Boys, especially Josh, because I know he had a bit of a rough time the last few minutes of that game. <laughs> yeah, Josh, stop being a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we can all agree on that. All right, and uh, with the B bomb thrown in, let's uh, move on to Ombrak. Uh, shout out to my mom who brought me into this world. Uh, shout out for you for streaming, of course. Uh, shout out to my team, even though they're noobs and we lost to a noobs. And <laughs> uh, shout out to chat. Uh, have fun. Uh, good night. Uh, stay protected. All right, and Phil. Shout out to Aison, Seppo, Ibli, Sammy, Crystal, Hilberg, Sen, Condom, Ryan, and our manager Amy. All right, and with that, that's going to be the conclusion of this broadcast. Uh, you've been watching Lego vs. Nerd Raids ETFL Season 27 Week 2. All the games were played tonight, uh, or at least the remaining games, I believe. I, I think it's going to be moving into Week 3 coming up next week. I don't know if it's going to start Sunday or if it's going to start Monday or whenever. These clowns uh, decide to, to schedule their games, but uh, it'll it'll happen eventually, and uh, it's going to be great. So far, the season has been really competitive, and uh, I hope that's going to keep it up. So, unless uh, news, you have any other things you want to say, <laughs> I'm just going to say goodbye to everyone and uh, thank you guys all for watching. You're the best. Oh, yeah, I just want to say thanks for joining me, Beater, and shout outs to Game on the production for bringing us uh, a good fixture today. And news is a noob. Wow, rude. Rude. The cut, noob cut, that cut wins GM.